Abu. Amen. All right, we would like to welcome everyone to our eighth uh, seminar. And in my role as a STEAM coordinator, I would like to introduce our honorable, illustrious, and praiseworthy chair, uh, Prof. A.C. Sutherland Adli. And she is a professor right here at the Institute of African Studies working in the language, literature, and drama section. She has served on several boards, committees, and commissions, both in the university, nationally, and internationally. And is currently chairperson of the National Inspectorate Board and Afram Publications Ghana Limited. She served in two, not one, but two ministerial positions as Deputy Minister for Culture and Tourism and Higher Education, respectively. She's written over 50 books. Her work in civil society cuts across the arts, children, girls' education, the development of urban, child-friendly spaces, civil society management, and capacity building. She is currently Secretary to Mofra Foundation. Chairperson of the Forum for African Women Educationalists, Ghana Chapter, judge for the 2013 Golden Baobab Prize by African Writers for Children, and convener of the Ghana Culture Forum. With no further ado, I would like to introduce you to the one, the only chair for today, Pro AC Sutherland. Okay, uh, good morning and uh, welcome to our eighth session. Um, I'm particularly pleased to be chairing this because we're going to be having um, an, an example of, of a mentor mentee uh, kind of situation and how students and lecturers can work together. Um, on, on various topics. Um, today um, we have uh, Dr. Edward Nabigny and we have Nan Ndua who um, are going to talk about libation um, as a logocentric performance. Um, and um, I'll let them explain all this logoligi um, title <laughs> and then um, I'll come in later. I, I, I don't know how you want to proceed, so I'm going to hand over to Edward right away. Thank you, Prof. Probably the best way to start this would be with a short libation prayer. Supreme God that we all worship. The earth that we all live on. All you unseen spirits represented here, this is water for you. We pray that we will not have faltering tongues today and bring your blessings on us so that we will have a meeting of minds and those who come here with evil minds, may you tie their tongues to the roofs of their mouths. <laughs> this is water for you. Right. Okay. So today we are looking at libation. There's been a lot of brouhaha about libation over the past few years from the time of President Mills when he cancelled it as part of the national performance during uh, national gatherings. So we'll be looking at what libation really is and why people are all up in arms about it. But we want to look at it in a different way. We want to look at libation beyond it being a religious thing. Because we think that people are more concerned about what is said. But I want to look at libation as an artistic performance. So it should go beyond the words that have been said. So that's what we mean by logocentrism. People are more concerned with the words than looking at it as an artistic performance. So our argument is going to be that libation should be 
part of our cultural heritage of performance arts. And so we should accept it as part of our heritage. The offering of libation has been part of official state ceremony since independence. On independence day, it is almost common to see the Nile Blumer performing. And with all the noise in the background, people are watching to see that man perform because he had a very unique way of performing. I suppose this video should be playing while I'm talking about this. Thing. For people who have watched libation all over the country, this was a priest who comes out with two bottles. And while he does a prayer, he's pouring from both bottles. On a hilarious side of it, there was a clip that KSM played one time. And the we, I'm putting there that clip. In the middle of the man, the night no more pouring the drink, one of the attendants thought that probably he was giving too much to the ancestors and he might get so inebriated that they will not be able to look after them. So he leaned across and seized the two bottles from the hands of the Nai Ulomo. And I saw that as a very good performance of the libation. So you could give he probably what this attendant was saying is that, hold on here. The ancestors shouldn't drink everything. Some should be left for us. So give the prayer to them. Just say the words and leave the part of the drinking for us to do. And so that little performance was carried out there, and then <laughs> the poor old man had to end up his prayer without giving the ancestors any more drink. Okay, but you can listen to this part of it. You see the crowd not really listening to the words. And he poured out an offering on it. 
he also poured out all oil on it. So that's an example of libation in the Bible. And David was also said to have poured libation in 2 Samuel 23, 16. So from this point of view, the Christian argument that it's pagan doesn't hold because you realize that all cultures may have done, may have had this action or may have performed libation in one form or the other. So in Africa, it's very popular. And many scholars have worked, especially in Ghana, among the Gans, Akans, and other um, groups. Kills in 2013 explains or defines libation as both a sacrificial act and um, as, well as, as well as a communion act, which aims to bring two worlds together. Asante and Abari expanded this definition and added that the act of libation employs eloquence and participation. The themes expressed in libation also reflect social and moral philosophical issues of the community. It expresses value, history, fears, hopes, and aspirations of the community. So libation, therefore, is a supplication as well as an oral act. It employs the actual use of words to communicate with spirits and forms part of the African traditional worship system. Atubra 2014 has also added that it's sometimes used as euthanasia to ease somebody lingering on the doorsteps of death to join us ancestors. So it forms part of every um, activity that we do, although we might sometimes not um, be conscious of it. Because sometimes in everyday life, we unconsciously, when we buy a beer or we buy a drink, we pour some down. And in our heads, we say a little prayer my great grandfather has some men drink or sharing with my dead friend or something. And it's been recorded in hip hop um, culture too, where an ice, uh, ice cube is said to have done this, performed this act one time in memory of his late friend who, was, who died in a shooting. Now, it expresses a philosophy, a worldview, and a history. For instance, among the guns, and in the libation we saw right now, it gives an um, understanding of um, what the gun, the gun people understand um, by what the component of the world is. So there is God, whom they call Kwame, obviously borrowed from the Akan, and Ethia the Earth, and then Nai Mensam, who is which is the deity of the sea. The trinity in Ga is made up of God, the earth, and the sea. It also involves um, an idea of what they think their geographical location is. So they, they call on Obutua Plow, which is our, eastern, our borders with the eastern region. And then Adam Volta, which is um, Shilao. And then Langma, which is the border with the Ebutu people. So it tells you that beyond these boundaries, the Ghana people see every, anybody who comes beyond this boundary as strangers or as visitors. So it's no surprising that typical Ghana people refer to people living in Accra, Accra as boy or visitors. It is reflected in their worldview of what their environment is. So the art of libation today, we think of libation as a traditional performance. Even though we are still part of what we do during um, national occasions, and, and it's even moved onto TV. We sometimes, because we think of it in the traditional sense, we think it's cast in stone. But this is an example of what is changing about libation. This is a reality show that was organized by TV Africa to promote Ghana Adamwe culture. And 
the Ulomo of Kolegu was invited to say the opening prayer. Now this is interesting because he's, he's pouring out drink, but not onto the ground, into a bowl. And he says his prayer. The first part was the fixed part that we know, the invocations, calling on the earth, this, this God and on the sea. Then after that, calling, um, saying prayers for TV Africa oh, to bless, to bless them for the initiative that they have um, brought up. And he even said that it's rare that you find people interested in promoting gun culture. There is some politics in there which is not the concern of this um, paper right now. But it shows you that as much as we think it is dying and as much as we think it's, we, we want to downplay its relevance, we are still using it and it is changing in form. Now, a libation can be long or short. It depends on a number of things. The libator, for instance, it depends on his world, his, the, his knowledge, ritual knowledge. It also depends on his oratory. There are instances when, after a libation is um, offered, you hear the crowd cheering the ritual head, like you've done well, you, you spoke well, and all of that. Now, what is what other thing do we see lately? There is a, a conflict between how audience should react to libation. There are mixed feelings. Religion plays a, a big part of this um, phenomenon. When we uh, when we are offering when there is a prayer offered at independence. There are people there who understand and there are people who don't understand. The people who understand may or may not may or may not respond depending on how they feel about the libation. I would ask if we were pouring libation here right now and you understood what was going on, would you clap in response or would you say yao in response? And if not why would you? And if yes, why would you? So there are a lot of factors that are affecting how we respond to libations. Whilst we might respond to um, a libation prayer said, said at a private funeral, we might not respond to a libation prayer said on a pub, in, in public. Probably because we might think that then on a public stage, because we subscribe to one religion or the other, uh, and loyalty will be put into question. So how are libators fixing this problem of response? Because response is very key to libation. The response gives a musical feel to the libator. It also times the libator. So there are high audiences now, like what we see in this picture. There is a one-man audience, while the other audience sits and watch him perform. So we hire um, an audience to respond to libation now. So, but it's different. It's actually different when, different when it's performed in a purely cultural setting. There, there is a mutual cultural understanding and there is a mutual cultural, cultural uh, feeling. So everybody participates. What does this tell us about libation? How do we think about it? Although the national discourse on libation has gone down, very soon when we change over um, to another government, how are we going to put this into perspective? Are we going to um, accept that it is part of who we are or we are just going to accept that it is part of something that is done by some people in Ghana. At this point, I will give it to Dr. Namini to analyze the artist.
Okay. Um, to add a bit to what she's been saying, there has been quite a lot of writing on the art of libation, but most of it has centered on analyzing the words of the libation. Libation has been looked at by different authors in terms of its representation of the history of people. SL 2014 has also looked at um, libation in terms of nationalism from the Kwame Nkrumah era when it became institutionalized in the national arena and even artwork started to depict people pouring libation. And he gives an example of the church, the of several churches boycotting the dedication of the then Ambassador Hotel, which is now what's the name? Moving Pick. Right, it's now Moving Pick Hotel. Several churches boycotted the dedication ceremony because the, there was going to be a libation prayer during that ceremony. And so authorities had to organize a different dedication ceremony for the Christian churches. So libation was put in the in the national in, into the national framework of activities from the time of Kwame Nkrumah. And you all remember his Ochiame Nana Wafuakufu, who became a central part of the pouring of libation during national events. So that has been well documented by quite a few scholars. Scholars like Brimpong have also looked at the featuring of libation in high life songs. What we will call probably the performative, so that uh, even though they are not really pouring a libation, the intent of the pouring of the libation is in the words. Coming to uh, more recent times, you all remember this hip life artist, Obrafo. <laughs> okay, but Obrafo played this song titled Inkroma. And it is, the song is in the form of a libation prayer, where he calls on Inkroma, he calls on the, the supreme gods, the gods, and, and as a, in San. Uh, so he calls on there and says, This is drink. So we can look at it in terms of the performative. Mm -hmm. That it, the intent is there. So like the prayer that I did at the beginning, I did not actually pour libation, but the intent of pouring the libation was in the words that was used. Here is water for you. So looking at performances and is honest because it has so many aspects that your eye cannot capture at the same time. Because of this, scholars have, have advocated that you always put it in context when you are talking about it. So to understand it, especially in, in performance studies, there is the advocacy to use videos as much text as you can so for this, for this presentation, we want to consider some meta-communicative aspects of libation, just to express what we are trying to say. So it's not just... Ralph was on the other
God here is a drink offering. Heavenly host here is a drink offering. Ancestors here is a drink offering. We pray for Kami Kuma. We invoke your name for you are like a vein. You say Ghana with your wisdom. And so this is a song played in the hit like vein, but it's a libation prayer. Okay. So let's continue from there and look at the performance of the libation. Several items are used in libation prayers, from water to millet flour mixed in water to sogum beer, what everybody knows as pito, to liquor. Emmanuel Achampong has written on how liquor became the item that is used because it got seriously promoted by particularly the Dutch. Because um, we did not have, um, what is it, the top flower schnapps. So it's very possible people were using water or palm wine until the advent of the Europeans when uh, gin and schnapps got introduced into the traditional setting. So schnapps now became the, the, the thing that is the drink that is used in Poria. And not just any schnapps, but henkels. No, yeah. Henkels. There are many different schnapps that are available, Paramount and whatnot, but if you want to be taken seriously, you go to a cheese palace with Henkels schnapps. Of course, that is still promoting the trade for the European, and that's the kind the thing that uh, Emmanuel Champong has written about, looking at it in terms of power play. Okay, but in some tra in the traditions of northern Ghana, mostly it is water that is still used in the pouring of libation. And in some ritual situations, then they mix water with um, guinea corn flour to do the libation. There is a particular festival in Balai where the guinea corn festival, where they use guinea corn flour. But the use of guinea corn flour is mostly because in northern Ghana, when a visitor has arrived, you are offered water. And it's not just water alone that you are offered. You are offered water with guinea corn flour mixed in it. So that is more, it has more body than just the water. Pito, even though it features very much in, uh, in the traditions of the North and features in rituals, is not particularly a ritual object. So it is not very often that Pito is used in the pouring of libation. Of course, there are differences. In Balai, Pito is actually used, and that is the one place that I've seen where it is one of the ritual uh, objects used for, for libation at the deity, at the shrine. And that village has a particular form of libation that can have the libation poured with three different things following one another. A pouring of the libation with water, followed by libation with either millet flour or pito, and then a libation with um, liquor, either gin or schnapps, or in the absence of any of these, even our local one, a petition could be used. So, so it depends on the place. Down south, basically, it is schnapps that is used for pouring of libation. Right. Now there are different postures to the pouring of libation. So we are more interested now in how the libation is performed. Some people stand, in some cultures, the person stands. So we saw that video of the Nile Ulomo where he was standing while pouring the libation. There are situations to where the libator bends down at the waist in pouring the libation. And then there are situations as we find in in northern Ghana again. In fact, in, in northern Ghana, 
the ligation is always performed while squatting down. And this is an example of this was at the uh, village of Balai. You can see the almighty people pot there. And Dr. Itebusu was uh, pretending the whole all these activities. <laughs> so I was there, they did the libation. It was all Greek to me. I just hope that they were really blessing me and not pouring some insultancy on me. <laughs> okay. So what you will notice before the man starts is that he removes his footwear and puts his feet firmly on the ground. See, he has removed the footwear and then See, the intrusion of modernity on traditional activities. He was going to face the audience, Dr. Ente Wushu told him to turn around and face the camera. <laughs> <laughs> but normally, the libator will face the people so that they can see that he's actually doing the right thing. So, there are rules to the performance which we broke on this occasion. So I hope we have been blessed. <laughs> okay. So there is that where the libator squats down and does the the libation prayer. This during the installation of the chief of my village. Now the MC says the Tindana should come very fast and do it. See, modernity. This is somebody who is going to go into a liminal space. And he is being told to hurry up. In a discussion with Prof. Avokwedo, he gave an example and suddenly struck us that when the libator is there pouring the libation, he is actually just there physically, but spiritually he has moved and joined the ancestors to deliver the message. And among the others, when he has finished the libation, he goes round and shakes the hands of the people. It is that performance is to say that he has taken a journey to the land of the ancestors and has come back, and therefore he is welcomed. So it is the uninformed who would not recognize this aspect of the performance of the libation and would look down the nose at it. So this is a Dagari libation. You see that the objects being used there, the water is in a god and it is a calabash. So things that have been provided by Mother Earth are what are being used. Of course, unfortunately these days we see libation being poured from plastic cups and other things. Okay, so he ends up this prayer here saying, If anybody has come to this function with evil eyes, may he go back home blinded. And if you step on somebody's foot, just say sorry. So that there will be no acrimony at that place. And that is usually the ending of the, in most cultures, the ending of the libation is a reference to the evil one. Those who have come there with evil in mind. And the girls who usually hoot at that part of it. So all the evil ones, oh, you go away with your evil. I suppose if um, Sleeping Beauty's dad had thought of giving some, inviting the evil fairies, she would not have had to sleep for 100 years. So they should have taken a page from Africa and make reference to the evil ones and tell them, okay, here's your dream too. And in some cultures, at that part, the dream for the evil ones is not poured on the ground, but thrown in the air at them. Okay, so I'll go faster now because we're running out of time. So the posture is supposed to be an obeisance you are lowering yourself. So there is a, symbol, a symbolism in the posture of the libator. 
So you remove your, even if you are standing, you remove your, your footwear and put your feet down on Mother Earth so that you are getting that strength from Mother Earth to be able to commune with the unseen spirits, the ancestors. So you are not a chief to stand in your, in your, this, you lower yourself or you bend down or you squat to be able to do the libation. Of course, it is also in a, in a talk with um, Prof. Awedova, he suggested that also people squat down because when they are pouring the libation to the deity, it is down there, so they have to squat down to be, you can't stand and splash the drink on top of the basin. You squat down so that you are closer to the shrine to be able to pour the libation on it. And we saw the use of the calabash. The Nile will more pour straight from the bottle, so there are the differences in the performance here. Then there is also the use of the con what the girls call the concord. You see the little object that the man is holding there. That's a coconut shell. What the girls call the concord. That is also used. Or in places where they pour liquor, they use a shot glass. That's a very small glass. The libation is put. The drink is put in the glass, and the libation is offered. And after that, the participants take a sip of the drink. So that's in a, we can call that commensality, the sharing of drink among the people at the at the session. Okay, we can look at the libation as a social drama. But it's part and parcel what uh, Victor Turner would call social drama. We can stretch it to uh, what I already mentioned, lim liminality, where the libator moves from the earthly existence into another dimension of existence and then comes back after the performance. So it's a dramatic performance that has that takes place when the libator is doing the libation. Now even though we say that libation goes beyond a logocentric performance, looking at the artistry of the delivery of the words would convince us that it is something that should be preserved as part of the literary heritage of peoples. The Kugu has recorded the use of occasions in libation prayer, words that are no longer in current use in the language, but words that could probably have existed in the language before. And of course, um, from the work that who, who looks at the libation in terms of historical reference. You can listen to the libation and get a lot about the history of the people. Now the Dua here was explaining to me why the mention of days of the week in the libation and was telling me that there are certain days that the gun spots against the 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 Anglo people and so those days are considered to be bad days. So the only days that they defeat they have a victory are considered good days, but days that they have they are defeated, are considered bad days. So you can look at the history of a people through the libation prayer. A couple of years back, Prof. Dakugu came and asked me whether my people from northern Ghana, the village of Sankana, have anything to do with the Ghana Adangwe because she recorded a libation prayer and in the middle of the libation prayer, the libator paused and said Sankana and then continued the libation. I couldn't think of any contact between our two people. So that is probably something that the historians would have to take up. See, but that is probably a historical reference to my village. There may have been a link somehow, and it appeared in that libation prayer. Just a short word appearing in there. So are we supposed to throw away all these manuscripts of history of our people? 
by stopping the performance of libation. I will probably leave you without food for thought. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure that um, there's much more that you could have said, but I had to stop them uh, so that we could have the interactive session. The floor is uh, open for, for an interaction. I want to plead with, with, with the senior members uh, and fellows to give us a few minutes to see whether we can get some students um, asking questions first and then the senior members can, can come in. Uh, yes, yes, Sewa. Thank you for the presentation. Um, you made a few points why Christians boycott the pouring of libation. Um, I was expecting to hear a little bit of history um, with regard to the impact of Christianity to a larger extent on traditional um, practices. Um, for, for instance, um, I haven't done a lot of history, but the little I know with the um, impact of Christianity on traditional practice um, is that there was alienation of people from their traditional beliefs and practices. An example is that of libation, puberty rites, dancing, and other forms of um, other ways of expressing people's um, culture. So I think that that could also explain why, even till today, people still do not uh, want to be interested in this um, libation if they are Christians. And then the second um, point, we talk, you talked about posture for libation. Are there any variations? Do people bend all the time? Do some stand? And the last question I want to ask, um, I don't see women involved in the pouring of libation. Is there an exception? Can you explain why women are not part, or if they are part on certain, on certain circumstances, what reasons explain that? Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, last one I forgot. <laughs> I put, I put, I read something on costume. Is there anything, because you are talking about performance, do we have um, required costume for um, the pouring of libation? Thank you, I think I'm done now. Okay, any further comments or questions from students? Thank you very much. Uh, mine has to do with just what Sewa said on the Christians uh, sort of looking at libation. My reading of libation also realized that even in the Old Testament, <coughs> the Christians have wine offerings. And it's interesting to see why Christians now uh, sort of protest it. But my main question is, uh, looking at libation now and looking into the future, uh, what do you foresee as becoming of libation? Thank you. We can take one more before we come back here. Yes, please. Hi, good morning. Um, the word, the cow word for libation is uh, I buy. And then the tree is um, pie. Is it? Yeah, you pie. The sound is the bomb. It sounds the same. And, and yeah, he. Pardon me. <laughs> um, I wonder if there's a link between the two and then in, in Bible, which is prayer. We say solemn and uh, only in Bible and the tree. So I wonder whether there's a link between the two and if you've thought about it. Good morning. I just wanted to draw the attention to um, statements and I think a bishop. Most Reverend Dr. Christy Sapon has some writings on this. And I think uh, in response to some comments uh, made after libation at the state function, I think the graphic of March 2011, 10th March, in fact, he made a statement to that effect. So it would be interesting to also look at his writings in that area since. Um, he's a Christian and 
he doesn't make contrary statements, but he makes some very interesting statements in support of that. Thank you very much. So let's get Kamp back here. So, Sewa, thank you for the input on alienation. I think it's uh, such an overflow force that we thought we would just leave it. Uh, yeah, but it's true that uh, Christianity sort of tried to alienate Africans from most of their traditional performances. Until quite recently, we could not even play African instruments in the church. So drums and xylophones were banned from the church. They were seen as instruments of the devil. So that is, is all of that. But since uh, the post-colonial discourse started, I think we've gone way past. Of course, there are still people who are yet to be culturally emancipated. OK. On posture, yes, if the libation prayer requires that you bend at the waist and perform it, until you have finished performing, you cannot straighten up. If it requires that you squat and perform it, even if you are suffering from arthritis, you still squat there and perform it. So the, I'm not sure if there is a mixture of postures. Women are involved in the pouring of libation. Many elderly women in many societies at an advanced age, particularly at an age when they have grandchildren, change status to that of men. That may not be very flattering to the women currently, but uh, among the Gagaba particularly, when a woman has grandchildren and has reached a right old age, she is said, said to have changed into a man. She's allowed to do all the things that men usually do in the society. She can smoke a pipe, she can open the granary and fed grain, she can pour libation to the deities. And it is sometimes recognized that it is these women who actually even know where the, the deities are sighted more than the men. And it is they who show the men where the particular deities are for them to perform the sacrifices and, and, and pour libation to them. But most of the time, women pour libation within the private confines of the family. We don't see that happening in the national arena. We are yet to see a woman pouring libation, let's say, at the immigration square or in some very public place. Gi Kwate Lai wants to know how I see libation. We already mentioned a few of the transformations that we are seeing in libation going into the new, into music. Um, Prof. Anido, who in his poetry has used, I mean, the format of libation prayers quite often. If you read his, uh, in the higher course of cosmic justice, a lot of the speeches of the witnesses in that, in that, piece of poetry starts in the form of a libation. Because that piece was written about, it's like a debate about whether to bring Pan Nkrumah's body back to Ghana or not. OK, I'll leave the others to Esther. Well, there is, we tried looking for literature on women
and forming a national culture. It's going to be, and we are still negotiating what should be official and what not should be official. But we we'll all agree that performing libation is part of almost every culture that makes up the space we call them. But the point, the problem is negotiating what should be allowed on a national stage and what not should be allowed. What not be allowed. We know that although um, after, after Ghana activity celebration, libations are not poured on the official national stage. But when you go to other regions, they are still pouring, they are still offering libation. So it's not a matter of um, libation being cut out, but it's a, it's a politics that goes beyond Christianity, that goes beyond ethnicity, which, like I said, will not be discussed into details in this paper. Now, about the etymology of the word. We are still interrogating the Ghana word in Thai, but as of now, the explanations we have got from the people we have interrogated implies that it was borrowed from the Akan. And it's not surprising because we learned a lot of um, the art of rituals from Akan, from the Akans. Our reference to God, their names, and our idea about um, our, our philosophy about what the world is made up of, some of it is borrowed from the Akan. So it would not be surprising, but we are still ask, we are still asking around to find if we are to see if we are going to find any similarity to to any any word that is originally done. But then the Gaba say Baha Bahakwan, which Bahikwan. It said with a glottal, which I have not learned to develop yet. <laughs> but it also it's also uh, synonymous to the Greek word, which is, which means pouring, means pouring of water or pouring out water. So definitely there is pouring out of something, whether drink or water, and that is what distinguish distinguish libation from other oral forms. There was this question about costume. The Nile Ulama generally wears white, and so he wear that when he's performing. In other traditions, there is what you traditionally wear. Among the Akan, it will be the cloth. But to offer the libation, you have to slip the cloth from your shoulder down to your waist. It is part of the supplication that you do in front of the deities and the elderly. Ones. It's just like the Ochiami speaking to the chief will not wear his cloth and wear his sandals and speak to the chief. He will remove the one sandal and put the foot on the ground and slip the cloth from the shoulder while he speaks. So it's a form of respect. In Northern Ghana, generally, it is smokes that people wear. And so most of the time, you find that the data is wearing a small. There is no real uniform or color for things in Northern Ghana. The small is just a homogeneous thing that people use. So at Riley do not link to libation. In Northern Ghana, you don't have to say black or red for females. You just wear your the smoke that you wear to a wedding today is the same smoke you wear to a funeral tomorrow. very much. Okay, so now we open up and we're going to start from the back. Yes. Dr. Thank you very much. Um, Eddie, uh, the presence of your people in the camp libation could be traced to the fact that the camp society was a leading importer of slaves and giving the northbound trade there's a possibility that some slaves from the northern part were brought down to the camp uh, society for various activities, including rituals, human sacrifice and others. So that would be 
the food that is sweet. At the advent of the transatlantic slave trade, the Gold Coast was imported slaves from the New Orleans, and most of these first landed in France society before they were shipped to, they were taken to Achino Boakwa and elsewhere. So that could be that. But, but my, the issue I want to, uh, to bring to the fore has to do with this conflict about to pour or not to pour. And we should look at it from the very activity libation. Uh, British uh, uh, native custom ordinance, which prescribed so many uh, traditional rights and practices, did not ban the pouring of migration. And then there was a practice within which was banned. And that ban had to do with blessing the chief. This expression was in Shiori. But it was a case. I don't, I don't know why they use the account where it is not in Shiaweni bless, whereas the case. And I got a, a full understanding of it when I had a conversation with uh, the late uh, uh, Professor Abiyi Wati, who told me that he never delegates someone to pour libation on his back street for him. So I ask him, so what happens if you attend a conference and uh, you have to uh, pour vibration during a busy time and say, I have a special arrangement in my bundle. So anytime uh, if I had to pour vibration and I could not go to my hometown, I did it. The power of the spoken word, that's the issue of it. So what is it? We are invoking the ancestors, the spirits to come into our midst. Any person who uh, does not like to mix the two, Christianity and ancestral worship, obviously not get to it. So we have to understand it that way. We go to some traditional areas, we also tell them we don't want Christian prayers at this time. And we should be perfectly understood. Uh, this is a traditional right, like you said. If you go to my area, the papel, that's what that means, it's welcome. More periods in between point of vibration. It's something they have accepted when they do it. So the controversy keep on coming. Go to the National Association. They don't know whether it's a libation or a prayer. Why? Because it's a gathering of Muslims, Christians, and none of the two together. So what format do we and through practice and um, negotiation, whatever, they are being on the phone, just, just like what you did, the, the prayer, the vibration you pour. The vibration you said, because you don't pour the water. So you said it in the vibration. So that's how in our discussion of study of vibration we should look. Um, talking about when to, uh, to fit, among our accounts in a public uh, space. The phrase in the way they perceive the ancestors will be entering the garden. So they don't face the crowd, but they face the entrance. In the stool rooms, they are praying to the stool, the poor vibration of the stool. So obviously they face the stool. But the stool, the poor others, the few who be allowed in to be behind the man pouring the vibration. So that's uh, it's not a question, but maybe uh, if not, if not, maybe it's a question. Yes, over there. I'll, I'll, come, I'll come for you. I'm sorry I came late, so you may ignore this question. But then I know that there's been some literature and some studies on migration by some scholars in this continent, particularly on this institute, including Professor Ketia. And, um, I think that work was by Baita. There was a conference here at the Institute. I think that the book is either Christianity in Ghana or something like that. But all these co the, 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 the proceedings were collected and then published. And the various perspectives by these scholars, and some of them Christians and some of them reverends, explain the philosophy behind the Nigerian 
by those who were advocating that it should be instituted as part of our modern culture and those who think. So if you take not, then you may want to look at that. That's point one. And the second is when you are pouring equation, there's a general practice amongst the guy. And you go beyond before any respectable chief. And I say respectable chief because I'm also a man. But not all of you can see what you can be. <laughs> um, but before any respectable chief, you would have to remove your cloth that way. During our studies um, um, in Kumasi, when I start to see it in public, and you go, you, 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 are, you stay about five meters away from him and remove your sandals. In fact, you do not go to shake his hands. You only get and go away. Before you shake his hands, hands, you have to shake your superbarian hands. Now, if you've got any evil powers, then superbarian here will not affect it before you get to it. But the essence I'm saying is that removing your cloth halfway is a sign of respect. It also exposes you if you have any hidden ammunition or knives in your cloth. And then you may want to attack the chief. So you may want to look at that. That remove your cloth very happily. And bowing is part of a tradition practice, which probably has also been extended to the ancestors. Thank you. Uh, my question is about the historical elements in ligation. And I'm asking this in light of what you said about the changing nature of the practice. Um, I want to find out whether the Historical references are fixed. In other words, any time the libation will be uh, offered, now or 10 or 20 years ago, are they making reference to this exact uh, historical event, or do they incorporate other uh, historical events as time goes on? And uh, the first uh, video you showed, the Ghana 50 celebration, they mentioned Pamikuma. And in the um, TV3, uh, TV Africa, where there was a mention of the uh, TV Africa for the ancestors to place them. Were these exceptional instances because of the occasion, or do we find the um, historical elements being updated as time goes on? Thank you. Um, I would like to thank you, first off, for a very um, enlightening presentation. I had uh, a couple of points and then also a question. Um, we started off the presentation with uh, origins of libations in Greek society. I would um, strongly advise looking at Stolen Legacy um, by George G.M. James. Uh, if you look at the Namor palette, that's the very first ruler of uh, ancient Egypt going back some 5,000 years. You have images of libation on there, you see it. Uh, all throughout the pyramids, all of these predating the earliest Greek civilization, so I would uh, recommend that. Also, my mother is uh, what's called an Okonfor, a traditional priestess. So I've been to hundreds of Okon ceremonies, and many times these are women who are in the highest position there. So if I look at Okonidi, if I look at uh, Obotibri and Kofridia, all of these places, I've seen more women pour libations than I have seen men pour libations. Sometimes we think about traditional society, we think about the traditional rulers, the uh, kings, and we may leave out the shrines. Many times it's women who are over those shrines. So in terms of that point of uh, gender, for um, Obrafo's song, he went from Trinion Pong Kwame to Asasiya and then to Nanano and Samanfo. In uh, Openin Ajikun's book, uh, Akan Verbal Taboos, he gives a structure of libations. And in between Asasiya and Nanom and Sama for the ancestors, there's a place for Abosom. So I was wondering if you had any ideas of why that part may have been left out of what would be the structure. Uh, we spoke yesterday about the uh, needs of the audience and the performance influencing the structure. I was wondering again, if you had any ideas of why that may have been left out, especially in the context of Christianity and these other things. That, that was in the song or, or Brafo for. No, I was just saying that because 
uh, of the Christian thing that we're discussing and any of those things that we're discussing, if you think that may have had an influence of him leaving out what would be part of the structure. And in general, I was wondering if you noticed similarities in structure across the groups because again, Opinia Jikum gives a set structure of how the libation goes from the invocation curse, so forth. Okay, thank you very much, Eddie. Uh, um, just to take your mind back to the very topic, um, you were, I thought you were looking more at the non-verbal dimensions, non-verbal di uh, performance dimensions, and that was your, your main focus. Uh, I know that is a very big topic, and uh, the historical and all of it can be very heavy, but your, be, your focus being non-verbal, I thought you would be giving us more about for example, even the formation, like the semicircular formation, and perhaps relating to even the position of the live data vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, the audience behind. Of course, the main the main program is not libation. There are other things that we are going to do, but you know, and and that may be just one dimension. And then perhaps even what you call the logo century, the images and the symbolisms, you know, that I thought we would. Uh, so that we could. I know perhaps time you were, you were, you were, you were taking my time factor, but if you have any perhaps you could give a point to that. Okay, let's have one more last comment, then we come back here. Well, actually, uh, Dr. Kamron uh, expressed my concern, which was about the origin, and we need to be very clear on that. You know, in Western academia, we try to they give uh, the Greeks credit for a lot of things that they actually uh, took, stole, borrowed from ancient, what you call it, uh, Egypt, which we know the people didn't call, that's, that is the Greek name for the <clears throat> land that the people actually called Kemet. And that ancient Kemetic society is over 3,000 years plus older than Greece. And again, we know that Greek, uh, the Greeks took most of their religious traditions from the ancient Kemetans. So again, the book that uh, Dr. Kambon uh, suggested is very powerful. Uh, Stolen Legacy by George G.M. James and um, should be a requirement in this department. Thank you. Reference to the preferring us that I'm sure I'll get it from you and so that we can properly place the origins of libation without leaving Africa. You, okay, about perhaps I'm not sure why you would have left out that thing, probably poetic license. It is possible that if he added that line to, to throw his whole rhythm out of gear. And so he, for poetic lines, since he left it out, it could also be that he wanted to be politically correct and not have a lot of Christians refusing to buy his song. You know, the money also counts. So until we interview Obraf, we will not be able to know. Moses. Hmm. The nonverbal pen was actually what we actually thought that 30 minutes was going to be enough for our presentation, and so we're shocked that time almost beat us. So probably we should blame ourselves for poor time management. We spent much more time on introductory things that we could have left out so that we could go to the performance part of the of the libation, which is of course verbal, but we are going to do more on the, the non-verbal parts of the performance of the libation thing. But probably just wait patiently until the paper is published, then you, you will read all those parts. Okay. Uh, it's pretty fun, man. Coffee. 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 Okay. The historical parts of it, uh, whether it's fixed or will change over time. There are some ritual performances of libation that will use fixed diction. The 
the lyrics, whatever the, the light painter will say is fixed. And so it passes on from one, from generation to generation, particularly at the shrines. What they will say they will be fixed. In performances like at the national level, where the Nile Ulamon, like this one that we showed at the Ghana 50 thing there, the individual flair of the performer will come to play, determining what he says. And this one is determined by the context of the performance. So at the national, uh, at the liberation square there, he was, he's more likely to mention the president and pray for the president. If the president were not there and was the vice president, he will, he will not be mentioning the president. He will probably mention the vice president. So um, it's context fixed or determined by context. So but there is that individual fear of the performer that will determine what is said. But depending on the space of performance, the what he will say, certain parts of what he will say will be fixed. And I suppose that is how the archaisms in some libation prayer, the historical references in some libation prayers have come down the generations until we get it now. If we stop performing at these places, then we'll lose all of that. Of course, the structure and the form of the libation will probably continue and change form into film, into songs, that the, the essential elements may be lost forever. I don't know if I have somehow answered your question. Um, Dr. Labi, thank you for that reference. So until our library is up and running again, we will not be able to access any of these. Oh, it's a farm library. Okay, so we'll consult. We will consult. Okay. <laughs> because there are certain ways that we need it, but we need the library up and running. So we, we may do with what we have currently. Dr. Ayesu's question is so far back that. Oh, you, you gave a suggestion. Okay, you, you actually explained a lot of the things that we're trying hard to explain. So thank you for stepping in. Of the fixed portions of my 
questions. Thank you very much. Um, we, we unfortunately have to close the session. I just want to make some very quick, quick, quick comments. I have to close, I'm sorry. Um, just some quick comments. First of all, the structure of the libation is such that you are expected to present the news that is current, the person who is pouring the libation. So it means that at any given time, you have an update of the history. So that's part of the structure, and, and that's how it's supposed to be. So in fact, if we were to do what they are doing, which is transcribe a whole number of libations within a certain cultural context, you are likely to see you know, a chronological development, which is very, very um, interesting, as well as those ones that are, are fixed. So that's one thing. The second thing is that I think that this um, presentation brings up a number of issues that we are all conflicted about. I was hearing us talking about ancestral worship and we could have gone on about whether we are worshipping or venerating. Um, you know, we, we have um, issues with, with, you know, whether you know, you're Christian or not or whether it matters or not. And so there are lots and lots and lots of conflicts in here which um, uh, we should also take up ourselves. As far as women are concerned, I just wanted to make the point that women who are given, who are in positions um, where you, you take up a role and it's your role in that role that you are speaking. So you, you know, women, there are some women who are actual chiefs or, 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 or kings, kings, I'm saying rulers, traditional rulers, and they will pour the libation if, if it becomes necessary. And I think that I want to mention um, Nana Bao Kwampa um, of the Kufia child who died some 15 years ago. Uh, but she was a very, very powerful orator. And if her, her, she found that her chami was bumbling along, she just take the thing from him and do it herself, um, and so on. You know. So I mean, it really depends on on the positions that people find themselves in. But I would like us to um, perhaps then give a, give a sign of encouragement to our presenters to go on and with the research and finalize it so that we can read all the things that you have said, plus all the things that you weren't able to say. Can we please um, encourage them? All right, so let me hand over to our, our, our Chief Ochiami here. All right, uh, I would like to thank them once again for a very good presentation. Uh, if everyone could give them another round of applause. I'm not afraid to touch touchy subjects at times. So we would like to thank them. Also, we'd like to thank all of you for coming out once again. Give yourselves a wonderful round of applause. And next week, we are very excited and happy that we have our very own esteemed, illustrious, and praiseworthy director, uh, <laughs> Professor Akosia Adumakwa Ampofo, who will be uh, talking about, if you can give us the title, Bank Work Women's and uh, Dr. Nane Kriya Anidoho. Uh, so they are giving a, a joint presentation and they will be discussing women in bank work and how can I come to work on Saturday when I have a family and children and things of this nature. So everyone should be here uh, promptly at 9 a.m. It will go from 9 to 10, just as always. Uh, we will also uh, have the video up and ready so Everyone keep an eye out for that as well. And we'd like to thank you once again for coming out. See you next week.